Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube and more importantly welcome to the series Living with Cystic Fibrosis. Loads of people on Instagram have asked me to put together a series of videos around my life with cystic fibrosis and basically tablets, fitness, um, airway clearance, um, lung function, diet, nutrition, all of these things. Um, so to start us off, I thought I would run through a day in the life of taking 60 tablets. As most of us know, or certainly should know, fats, proteins and carbs essentially are broken down uh, by enzymes in the pancreas into nutrients to, to fuel the body. People with cystic fibrosis have this thick, sticky mucus which essentially blocks the passage from the pancreas to the small intestines which obviously stops the nutrients from getting getting into our into our bodies to fuel our bodies. So bring in Creon enzymes. Now these enzymes essentially are made uh, in two forms, in two strengths. So you have the 10,000 Creon and the 25,000 Creon. 10,000 Creon is uh, basically a lot of the time used for younger children, um, toddlers uh, and kids where they have to take quite a few of these because the strength is only 10,000 um, per meal. And the general rule of thumb is one Creon for every seven grams of fat for me on the 25,000, okay? Now, everyone's different. So this is where the caveat starts early on. Everyone's body is different. I'm 34 this year. I've grown up understanding my body, understanding how many enzymes I need roughly for an average meal, a big meal or a snack, because I've learned to adapt. So obviously your doctor will be able to advise you on how many you should be having. Um, but what I found is a bit of trial and error um, for me with, with Creon over the years. I did, they had a shortage of 25,000 a couple of years ago, funnily enough, because it's made from pig's enzymes. Um, and they had a shortage of pigs a couple of years ago. So I had to go back down onto the 10,000s um, just for about a month. But I've got to be honest, they just didn't agree with me. My body's become so used to the 25,000s that I just didn't, my body didn't like going back down. So on an average day for me, um, I can take anything from 25 to 30 of these every day. So for breakfast, I'll have four or five, depending on how big the meal is. Um, and then obviously the big meals, I'll have four or five, and then I'll have two or three with snacks. So on average, I'll have 25 to 30 of these a day. Moving on to salt. Now, this is the big thing within the Cystic Fibrosis community and has been for many years now. We're actually starting to fund, uh, a charity of mine, CF Warriors, is starting to fund research down in Portsmouth University in the UK around salt in our sweat um, and exercise and obviously with things like sweat people with cystic fibrosis lose three to four times more salt in our sweat than the average person obviously the biggest problem with that is that you lose recognition of dehydration and thirst so when you're exercising or whether you're in hot weather, um, it's, it's really difficult because you need to obviously replenish that salt. So for me, the salt tablets are so important when I'm exercising. I didn't used to sweat that much, but in the last few years, I've definitely been sweating a lot more when I'm exercising for whatever reason. My body's changing and I'm, I'm growing up and maybe I'm just sweating a little bit more for absolutely no reason whatsoever. But um, so my intake in, in the sodium tablets, the slow sodium tablets, has definitely increased. Um, and I take two in the morning, two at lunch, and two in the evening. However, if I've got a big training day or it's particularly hot, I will increase that to three, three, and three. So, you know, sometimes I can go up to nine tablets a day. Now, that sounds really excessive, but just go back to the point I made earlier that people with CF are losing three to four times more salt in their sweat than the average person. So salt tablets are so important for us. And for me personally, I know when I haven't had enough salt um, because my, my energy levels are, are really low. And when I'm training to the, to the extent that I am, I know that I need to be fully topped up on, on salt. Now we come on to vitamins. So vitamins play a huge part in someone with cystic fibrosis. 
Um, we tend to be quite deficient, especially on vitamin D. And there's lots of research out there to show that people with cystic fibrosis later on in life have a, a tendency to suffer from um, bone issues like osteoporosis um, because we don't we basically don't absorb the fat sol soluble vitamins as well as the average person so I also live in Wales and we're not blessed with sunshine all year round even though it's it's sunny today um, I'm generally drenched uh, most of the time so I don't get a lot of sun so I take vitamin D supplements, I take two vitamin D tablets every single morning um, and these are the high strength vitamin D, so the 1000 IU per, per tablet. So I take two of those every morning um, and again it, it's one of those things that it's not necessarily something that I can feel that I'm deficient on vitamin D um, but I know that if I don't keep up with my vitamin D tablets um, and all my other vitamins um, throughout the, the day that I know that I'm potentially going to be doing damage long term so it's just really important to keep on top of those. I also take four vitamin BPC, so the multivitamins, um, every single morning. I also take the vitamin E, so I take one of those every morning as well um, and again on, on training days I do tend to increase my vitamin levels, um, my vitamin consumption um, I take a vitamin C tablet every morning with my drink, uh, with my water in the morning as well. And again, it's something that's sort of come up during sort of training over the years that if my vitamin levels are, are where they need to be, my energy levels are where they should be, so therefore I'm going to perform better. Um, and it, it's not just good for training, obviously, it's good for everyday life. So, yeah, so sometimes on, on big training days, I will take probably five or six multivitamins and I'll up the dose on vitamin D and I'll also up the dose on vitamin E as well. So yeah, that, that certainly brings my tablet count for the day up um, even before I've had breakfast. So now we turn to this little gem called carbocysteine. So it comes in packs like this and um, carbocysteine is basically what they call a mucolytic, which in plain simple terms means that when you take these, it helps to break down the stickiness of your mucus or phlegm. Um, pretty disgusting, I know. Um, so it, it makes it easier for you to, to cough up your mucus um, and whatever sticky stuff is down there that needs to loosen up and, and come up. So a mucolytic, basically, the carbocysteine really helps with that. And I take two in the morning and two in the evening. Um, going back a few years, I was never very productive. So when we say productive, we mean that we don't actually, uh, if you're productive, you cough up quite a lot of, of mucus. But I was never really that productive. And then I started taking the carbocysteine and I saw little bits, um, you know, it, it did ease it a little bit and I was a little bit productive then. But even then, I've, I've never really been hugely productive. But it's just one of those things that I take um, and it's become habit that, you know, it's a good habit to have where I'm just taking four of these a day. Um, so yeah, like I said, two with my breakfast in the morning and two with my dinner in the evening. And now we lead into probably the three most, well, the two drugs that are the most exciting in the CF community at the moment. Um, unfortunately, they're not available to all um, and that's something that we need to keep campaigning for. But as well as that, there is, they're probably usable, I say usable in loose terms, to roughly 80 to 90 percent of the pop, CF population worldwide. So there's still the sort of 10 percent of CF patients that these drugs don't work with because we have different gene types. So there's huge amounts of work to do in the CF community. But these two drugs are basically Caftrio and Caladeco that I take. Um, now, without getting too scientific um, around cystic fibrosis, but Caftrio is basically made up of three substances, and I'm going to read them from here just because I'm probably going to say them wrong if I don't. So the three substances of Caftrio are Alexacafta, Tezacafta, and Ivacafta. And basically, in a nutshell, those three substances um, work by increasing the CFTR protein um, and improving its function, essentially. Um, and then the Caladeco 
which is so I take two of the calf trio in in the morning with breakfast, um, always with fat um, in my in my food um, for breakfast. So I take two of those and one of the Caladeco at night. And the Caladeco basically acts as um, it, it essentially helps open the gates within your cells um, to keep the gates open longer for the calf trio to work um, and, and help. So yeah, those two drugs go hand in hand for me. So like I said, those are three extra tablets a day that I take, which I've got to be honest is, you know, since I've taken them, um, I, I was always a little bit skeptical because some people just don't agree with them. Um, the, you know, they, as in the drugs, don't particularly work that well so there have been cases where they haven't improved lung function they haven't improved quality of life um, so I was always a little bit skeptical and I'm always sort of like thinking well you know I would kind of look after myself and my own fitness and health as, to the best of my ability um, so if the drugs don't work you know I'm still okay but I was blown away by the calf trio and not because of lung function um, but simply because it, within a day or two, I realized I could take a deeper breath, which is something that I've never experienced and I never sort of valued that as much as I should have done. But also, more importantly, I was able to laugh without coughing, which is something for the last few years that I just wasn't able to do. Um, I laughed without coughing as a kid um, and growing up as a, as a young adult. But then, you know, when I hit my sort of late 20s, early 30s, I produ I. I basically got a couple of bugs um, and realized I had really one really bad bug called non-tuberculosis mycobacterium, which I still have to this day. Um, so the antibiotics didn't work for me. I've still got that bug. But Caftrio 100% was a huge drug um, for me and it just works so well. So like I said, two of those in the morning, one Caladeco at night, and it's helped me laugh without coughing, which is incredible. Which brings me on to the final piece of my puzzle when it comes to what I take every day. So it's not necessarily a tablet, but it's a product um, which I've used for gut health uh, recently because with cystic fibrosis, what, what a lot of people don't understand outside the CF community is that cystic fibrosis doesn't just impact the lungs. Um, predominantly it does impact the lungs, but it also impacts the other vital organs including the digestive system. So I've um, struggled with my digestive system growing up. I had emergency surgery when I was born um, and I had an ileostomy that was reversed. And then when I was 21, I had um, another emergency surgery, uh, another emergency operation and had a, a stoma and a bag. And I had that bag for about a year before that was reversed. And even after that, you know, my stomach was, was much better but even after that, I still suffered with bloating. Um, I eat a lot of calories anyway. We always, you know, people with CF only digest 50 to 60% of what we eat. So I always eat a lot. However, the bloating can be, or certainly was, quite painful and just uncomfortable um, after a big meal. So I did a bit of research and I found that gut health and your microbiome in your gut is so important not just for your digestive issues and your di your general health and digestion but also your mental health i'd never really valued how good it was for your mental health to look after your gut so i reached out to a company called simprove and they sent me their live and active bacteria in this little bottle and um again i was pretty skeptical um and after a couple of weeks i have i had one shot of it every morning 10 minutes before breakfast they say to have it 10 minutes before just so it can sit there and, and start acting before you actually put food in and trying to digest and I've got to be honest like it's really hard because I didn't really have a gauge as to like any numbers as to where I'm starting where I wanted to be like lung function things like that which are quite highly monitored within CF but after two weeks I just generally felt better and felt like the bloating had eased after meals so it was a really strange one really, but then I was kind of reminded um, by a doctor that, you know, if something makes you feel good, that's, that's good enough. Um, you don't need a number to look at. As long as it makes you feel good, then it, it's, you know, that's a good marker. 
So yeah, so I wouldn't go another day, even though I can't give you a number as to how it's improved my bloating or how it's improved my digestion and my mindset and mental health. Um, I certainly wouldn't go a day without taking my shot of Simproof. And that is pretty much it in terms of living with CF, my daily routine around my tablets, how many I take and how I generally look after myself with, with my Simproof. Um, that's that. The biggest caveat I will put on this video is everyone's individual. We're all different, we've all got different needs, um, dietary needs and vitamin needs. So, you know, I've given you those numbers because I've been asked by so many people on Instagram. But, you know, obviously you need to consult with your doctor. I'm on a large amount of salt tablets and vitamins because of what I do and how I train and how much I sweat. So, you know, please just bear that in mind. This isn't advice or guidance by any means. Um, this is literally just showing you what I do to keep as well healthy, fit and happy as possible. So with that, I'm going to ask if you think this video is useful, beneficial to anyone you know with CF, if they've got a young child or it's a young family with cystic fibrosis, please feel free to share this video with them. And if you like it, subscribe, hit the like button and wait for way more videos and content on living with cystic fibrosis.